welcome back to News Junkies, a production of the Heritage Media Group. I'm Bill DeFoy. Joining me right now, Christy Aiken, and she is a photojournalist with a number of local papers right here in Ventura County. And today we're going to be talking about a water shortage, the drought that's going on here in the state of California. Christy, good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we've got a major drought going on, been going on for a few years now and no let up in sight. Right, I think we're California's in its fourth year um, in the drought. I, when we look at things from a financial standpoint, naturally when you tell people, especially those who are gonna feel it most, um, residents who have already been trying to be as conservative as possible, when you tell someone they're gonna pay more for something, they're not naturally gonna have a joyful response, but hopefully those same individuals who have been already trying to conserve water can understand that it, what's what's good for everybody is is that we will be conserving water. So what is your take with the drought? What do you think people need to be doing? What the government has done? Perhaps what the government hasn't done? Um, in times like this, I think it's important for us to look look at other countries or other places who have survived drought, like Australia, for example, has survived the longest drought in record, which is a 17-year drought. And at the time, they implemented plans and projects that people, you know, this, it was very costly canals for conserving water or um, implements of water rationing that seemed exceptional at the time and then now are actually a norm in, in conservation. So, and if we look at California, like, like our history has been and will repeat itself, it would be a good investment to, to connect with other countries who have managed to survive or continue managing to survive low water levels. Well, one of the things that I have done in my research is that the country of Israel, really known as a country with a lot of desert, uh, they claim no uh, water problems whatsoever that they've managed it rather well, and I think perhaps uh, water management is key to this whole thing. Absolutely, I think um, unfortunately at this time in America, cash is king, and so water is, is going to the highest bidder, and what we could really use is implementing laws in effect that make everybody use an equal amount of a lower levels of water. There are cities in California at this time who are under extreme water rationing levels. Um, Porterville, California, is um, they're only allowed to draw a certain amount of water from a basin every day, and when they want to shower, they are going to centralize shower locations, and this is already in California. Well, that's amazing because um, I live by myself, I take a shower, right. you know, I'm the sole occupant of my apartment, and so, you know, I don't think of those things where I may have to go to a, a facility that offers community showers. Right, absolutely. Um, sometimes we don't think about a crisis until it becomes a crisis, and that's, I think, part of poor planning um, on our part for not recognizing the history of our agriculture and the history of our environment in California and taking plans to lay down blueprints to prevent these measures from happening. But there are, you can call your local, um, like a national, your local water station. There are people in charge who will come out to your house for free and test your house, all your toilets and sinks and outside just to let you know what's leaking and they have uh, programs to fix it. There's also, um, it's a, a major debate right now about whether to keep your lawn or let your lawn go. And um, one thing I did like about what Governor Brown said, I heard him say in his speech that the idea of green lawns and roses is just gonna have to go. And I really liked that he said that because we can, if we can begin to open our minds as a culture to water conservation, it wouldn't be, nobody would be uncomfortable with letting their lawn go. So I say brown is the new green, I'm all for it. When I see a dead lawn, I'm like, yes, this is the, a humanitarian in my neighborhood. I really enjoy seeing people let their lawns go or redoing their lawns. And there's now organizations that will come to your house and do it for free. So the information is out there. There are ways to conserve out there. It just takes a matter of changing the way that we look at water and water usage. And if we do it in prevention, hopefully we can avoid doing it in crisis. Well, I remember several years ago, uh, and you live in Camarillo, I live in Camarillo, but years ago I lived in a house. And the city of Camarillo sent me a letter saying, your lawn is going brown, fix it, 
but at the same time, they were issuing these memos, you've got to conserve water. And so you get this mixed message Absolutely. sometimes from government. Absolutely. Um, what we need to do is, uh, we as the people, meaning we need to recognize where our power is and become more community involved when something is up for a vote, when we, when we can take action and take control over what is going to happen, then we absolutely need to and right. have a say in what happens and how green our lawns need to be. Well, I remember with the city of Camarillo, they told me, well, you need to install a sprinkler system. Right. Well, I was renting the house at the time. And so I had to defer the city to my landlord, who up until that point said, there's no way that we're gonna put in you know, a sprinkler system. And it wasn't until I was ready to move out that they decided, oh, we better up the, uh, the ante here. And they did put in you know, a sprinkler system. And I went, oh my gosh, a little bit too late, but they did it anyway. Right. Well, that's another thing about prevention. So there are some, some agricultural cities in Northern California who use what's called a drip irrigation system. And it, it's common in windy areas where sprinklers will miss a lot of the land. So what they can do is run it right along the bottom and effectively water just the seeds that need to be watered. Um, it is more costly up front and uh, that is why it's not more common. But if we had a law in effect that required that type of irrigation in not only farming and agriculture, but in residence as well, um, that would play a major role, as well as if it just became less popular to have a green lawn. Like, unfortunately, that might just have to go, like Governor Brown said. Well, that's very true. And one of the things, too, is we can always use a good rain. <laughs> yeah, everybody should do a rain dance. <laughs> yes, let's, let's hope that everybody does a <laughs> rain dance. And again, we, have, we don't really have the time to get into it, but we have the whole Northern California versus Southern California with you know, capturing the snow melt and that kind right. of thing. Well, and there are places that are normally at this time in abundance of five feet of snow that are at zero, and we rely heavily on melted snow. Um, we, we will have to take a serious look at the way we use water agriculturally and residentially. And perhaps even capture rainwater as it comes. Absolutely. All right, well, we're out of time. Thank you for joining us, Christy, and we look forward to our next visit together here on News Junkies, a service of the Heritage Media Group. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bill DeFoy with News Junkies, and joining me right now are two members of the Ventura Black Widows. It's a female football team, and on one side I have Banana Gutierrez, and on the other side, Moms Gonzalez. And we're here to talk about the Ventura Black Widows. And ladies, good to have you both with us today. I'm going to start on this side. Let's talk to you a little bit. Now, you're, you're moms, right? Yes, that's correct. All right. So, moms, tell us a little bit about what you do on the team. Um, I play various positions. I do play a wide receiver. I've played tight end and both defense and offense, and I have a lot of fun. I really enjoy it. We, I bring my kids out. They come out and watch, and they are really good supporters, including all my family. Well, tell us, how did you get involved in playing tackle football um actually my oldest daughter uh introduced the team to me and that is how i started playing and i loved it ever since and i stuck with it so kind of give us a perspective you've got six children you were telling me and they range in ages from what to what from 24 years old to two years old oh my gosh and you're only 27 right yes <laughs> So uh, let's turn over here to Banana Gutierrez, and Banana, good to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about what you do with the Ventura Black Widows. I'm a wide receiver. I have played defensive end and safety. And how did you get involved with the team? Uh, from a friend. Um, she was talking about it, and I got curious, and I joined. So you went and tried out for the team. Uh, how many seasons have you been with the Black Widows? Um, three. Three seasons, and what about you? How many seasons? Um, I came in in 2010, and I guess I could say I've been involved for about two seasons. 
So two seasons. Now the group I know was formed back in 2009. So they've been around for six years or so. And what what kind of a schedule do you uh, play every year? Um, usually our, te- our season would be, we start in November like with tournaments and we start playing in January. And we usually end about July. Well, I know I talked to the owner, and he said that the season is starting to wind down for the year. Right. So what do you do on, in the off months? Um, we still practice. We keep going on. We do practice on Saturday and Sunday, um, 9 to 12, and we keep our skills going. So that way we're up to par whenever the season does come up again, or we may have uh, scrimmages that arise that other teams would like to play with us, and we're prepared. So where do you people play? Um, we play at Newberry Park High School. That would be our home games. Um, we've also traveled. We've been invited to Tijuana, Mexico, to New Mexico. Um, we've had games out in or- in Reno and Oregon. So we travel quite a bit. I believe even Utah. Even Utah. And you've been on the road with the team as well. Yes, a few times. So what is it like for you to have to get up and leave town for a while? It's fun. Uh, no kids. <laughs> partying after the games but it's it's a it's a, a fun bonding time with the team you, you get to bond and it's like you get to know people better so how many people are on the team we have about 17 people in the roster so and all these people play various positions and probably even more than one position yes uh we we don't have a big team so we all have to pitch in where we're needed Wonderful. And I know that the team is involved in a lot of charitable work. You've been involved with the Rescue Mission and Project Safer. What is that? Project Safer is a group who goes and actually rewards designated drivers. Um, I myself actually went out uh, a few weekends ago and it was really interesting. We go out and we give prizes and we look to see who is the designated driver for the parties that are attending the clubs in Ventura. I know that Project Safer does go between Ventura, Camarillo, Thousand Oaks, Westlake, just depending what that we can falls on. And we go out and we give prizes to all the designated drivers as well as we give out a grand prize. So it even turns out to be that they get um, gift certificates or cash awards. So we really enjoy it and we like helping out to, you know, help them project that it's really good to have your designated driver with you. And how does your family feel about you participating in tackle football of all things? Um, They really like it. They're very supportive. Um, I think that my dad came out to watch us uh, in November and I think he was really surprised to see that there was really females out on the field uh, tackling each other and that it was real football. (laughs) Now, when you say it's real football, are we talking four quarters, and how long is a quarter? Um, I believe we're on 20-minute 20 minute, 20 minute quarter, 10-minute uh, quarters, I'm sorry, and um, it is four quarters, and yes, it is real football, real tackle football. We have our plays, we have our downs, and you get your touchdown, so, you know, it's a, it's a challenge. You don't know what kind of team we're coming up against. So, the, the kind of rules that you have, I... You know, 10 minutes for a quarter, and you play four quarters. So it's probably about an hour's worth of a game by the time you figure out timeouts, halftime, and and all of that. Um, Is it more like NFL when you have the penalties, same kind of penalties, uh, same type of plays perhaps? Um, Yes, same type of play, same type of penalties. Yes, all of that is pretty much uh, equal. And the last thing that I want to ask about today is recruiting. How does the team go about recruiting new members? Okay, well, for recruiting, we do recruit year-round. Um, we do it throughout the season, and just before the season, we host different uh, recruiting locations. Uh, we go ahead and give out flyers when we're out promoting for other businesses when we're volunteering. So this 4th of July, we will be at Oxnard Beaches, and if anybody's interested, you're more than welcome to come out and try out. Excellent. And how did you get recruited for the team? Uh, my oldest daughter. <laughs> she, You're kidding. Yes, she uh, used to play for the Black Widows, and she told me to come out and play, and I love it, and I'm still playing. All right. I'm going to ask the same thing of Banana. How did you get involved with the team? How did you get signed up? A friend told me about it, and I came out to a, uh, a tryout, and I stayed, and I like it. 
Excellent. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining us. You can catch the Ventura Black Widows on Facebook, and you can connect with them there. And I want to thank uh, Moms and uh, Banana for joining me, and I'm Bill DeFoy with the Heritage Media Group. Thank you for, for both of you taking time out of your schedules today to come by and visit. And if you want to see what the Ventura Black Widows are all about, they do have a Facebook page. And so you just need to go to Facebook and look up Ventura Black Widows. I'm Bill DeFoy. We'll see you next time here on News Junkies, a service of the Heritage Media Group.